Hey there, I'm Ian Douglas. I'm the author of the website, techinterview.guide. I'm here to help people with career advancement and interview preparation. My live stream on Twitch covers topics such as company research, how to build resumes and cover letters, applying for the job, getting through interviews, and what to do during negotiations. I've coached thousands and thousands of people over the years to get jobs at the biggest tech companies in the industry, and I'm here to help you too. The following episode is taken from a longer live stream event and may contain interactions with other people in chat. Check out the end of the episode for more information. Let's get to it. At face value and, and sort of go through them. So this first one was submitted uh, not anonymized. Um, and there's a little checkbox on the form if you ever want a resume review. Um, you can send it over to this link uh, that you'll see uh, in chat. And you can, you can send over a resume. I do ask that you anonymize it. But if you don't want to, there's a checkbox saying, like, I have either anonymized it or I'm okay with my information being out there. So here's the first resume that we're going to take a look at. Um, now, this person is not in America. Um, and so in other countries in the world, they don't always have, uh, like, they have, they have different sort of standards and expectations on what they build. And in this case, they didn't give me any kind of notes to go on as far as like what they want out of their resume review. Um, and so we're just going to take a look uh, at this and say, okay, well, from a CV point of view, so from a European CV or curriculum vitae, um, you know, what would we be looking for on here? And, it, you know, several years ago, it was absolutely okay to put your picture on a CV. Nowadays, I highly recommend don't put your picture on here. Um, people don't need to know that. They also don't need your full mailing address. They don't need to know this information. At most, maybe the country that you're in, um, you know, or the time zone that you're in or something like that if you're looking for a remote job. Now, if you're looking for work in a particular area, then it would be okay to say, I live in this particular city or province or state or something like that. Um, like here in the United States, I might say, if you want a job in New York, put on your resume that you live in New York. You're more likely to get interviews, more likely to get... Uh, get a job offer than if you live in San Francisco and you want a job in New York because then they're like well if we want people to come back to the office we got to relocate this person or they're going to be offline for several weeks while they relocate um, and some companies don't want to take that risk and so I usually tell people don't put your location on here it can subject you to geographic bias um, but in this case um, you know maybe that's a standard maybe that's something that's okay with them but I would say you probably don't need your full mailing address on here. I think that that's a bit too experienced uh, or a bit uh, bit too explicit as far as uh, having having information on here. Again, you know, maybe having a photo on here for a European CV in the past was okay, but I know European recruiters now um, that I've had conversations with several of them now, and they're like, yeah, we don't, we don't need your picture on a resume because again, it can subject you to bias. So I would generally recommend like take this kind of stuff off your resume. In this case, they, they do a really good job kind of calling out their own title. Like this is what they want to call themselves. They're a web and mobile blockchain developer. One thing that I noticed with this is I can highlight the letters in their name, but I can't highlight the letters in web and mobile blockchain developer. This is a, a graphic on the background as well as their headshot on here, uh, which means that these keywords are not going to be extracted on the resume from an applicant tracking system. So unless they've got mobile blockchain developer elsewhere on the resume, um, these words are not going to get picked up by an applicant tracking system. So as much as possible, don't put text in graphic format on your resume. Um, same thing with icons. Like you don't really need an icon around this. Like I know that this is an email address. You don't need the little envelope. I, I can understand that this is your location. You don't need a little map icon. Portfolio, again, I don't even know what this is. It looks like a newspaper. Like that's not really applicable to portfolio in this case. Um, but they do show mobile applications. So I think that that's, you know, it's a, it's a good use of, of the space, but I can't click on any of these to expand them or make them bigger or anything like that. So there's not much I can do here as far as, um, uh, you know, experiencing what they've built. I can only look at it on the resume and unless I can zoom in on this, I can't get a whole lot of detail over how are they building out these, uh, you know, these enormous, uh, or, the, or these mobile applications and, and so on. So definitely something to, to consider there um, as far as that goes. Um, coming back up here, you know, about, I have over eight years experience in software development. I'm always learning following latest development standards. I provide high quality, well-tested products, provide realistic deadlines that I always met. Always. Okay. Maybe that's the case. I'm flexible with my work hours because I'm a full-time freelancer. I'm available on a daily basis. 
you'll know the current status of the job because I contact you with updates frequently. All this sounds really good. From a communication point of view, I know that you're going to be really proactive about this. At the same time, it gets a little tiring to read every sentence starting with the word I. I, 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 I'm, 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 I, I, I. Uh, except for this last one. It says, you'll know the current status because I contact you. Um, so I'd say, like, mix that up a little bit. Like, maybe change up these sentences a little bit so they don't all start with a personal pronoun. Um, but also, like, coming back to this idea of blockchain, if I search for the word blockchain, block change so it does show up on the page so does the word mobile so the words that i was hoping were going to be searchable on the page from up here are searchable so that's fine um but you know even looking at this like this font is different than this font like these two fonts as as it's kind of a subheading look fine but this font seems really stretched out. So from a consistency point of view, they're, they've got these really nice design details over here. But then when you get into you know stuff like this, they're like, oh, where, where did that attention to detail go? That attention to detail just kind of went away. So just watching out for things like that. Because uh, some people aren't going to be that picky about it. But some people are like, oh, you know, like you, you didn't capitalize something properly or... You know, let's say, you know, SQL on Postgres wasn't capitalized. Like some people will just dismiss your resume just because you didn't capitalize something properly. Um, to to look at that and be really nitpicky about a font would be a pretty trivial kind of thing to do. But when I've got a job posting, I'm looking over hundreds of resumes. And so I'm looking for a quick reason to say no. I'm looking for a reason to say no when I'm looking over resumes. Like, no, no, no. Okay, maybe. You're going on my maybe pile, and I'm going to come back to that one later, and I'll scan through the maybes again, maybe do another round of nope, 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 um, as I kind of uh, compare you know, one to another. As far as the overall skills go, um, the order that you put these skills would depend a lot on what I'm looking for as a, like within my company. Now, from what they're saying up here, it's, it's a little hard to tell um if they're looking for full-time work because they say they're a full-time freelancer so in this case again they didn't submit any notes with what they want to critique over so i'm going to look at this from a purely um like freelancer point of view so from a freelancer point of view um it would be good to know okay you've got a lot of experience in a lot of different languages and a lot of different frameworks a lot of different platforms like google firebase you know using lots of databases and so on um although mongodb like the db here is not capitalized properly um so again attention to detail on, on that sort of thing uh but mobile development blockchain development so they've got a wide variety of experience now they claim to know all of this with only eight years of experience is that possible absolutely it's possible the question is how deep is their knowledge in any of these things if they spent eight years building up such a wide variety of programming languages and frameworks and you know different platforms between web and mobile and blockchain um, and so on previous streams i've talked about being what we call a t-shape engineer where you have a breadth of knowledge but you go really deep on a few things so being a t-shape you've got this breadth of knowledge and then you go really deep on on fewer things it's hard for me to tell what they've gone really deep on maybe react um because their mobile development is also react native using Flutter, maybe but it's really hard to tell when you're building out a resume the key thing here is that you want to point out to them in a hurry the value that you bring to that specific company now as a freelancer your job is to say hey i can do a lot of things and i can do a lot of things well that's how you're going to gain attention from having a freelancer type of resume or in this case a cv so you want to show that you have a variety of, of, uh, of skills. The problem is all they list here is education and they can, you know, that, uh, under an additional skill, they say English, um, you know, clearly their resume is written in English. So presumably they read and write English, but I can't click on anything here on their portfolio. They don't share a GitHub account. So I can't go experience anything that they've built. I have no proof that they actually know any of this stuff. Unless I call them, but they don't even provide a phone number. The best I can do is email them. So I can email them and say, hey, you know, I got a copy of your CV. I'd like to chat about 
you know, what you can do as a programmer. But I'm more likely to just say no on a CV like this or on a resume like this because you claim to know these things. You put some screenshots on here, but I don't know for sure that these are even your projects. Like you could have grabbed these off of, you know, Shutterstock or something. I don't know. These could be somebody else's application. Unless I see them on your GitHub where I can see that you've done these commits with a username that maybe matches your email address or maybe matches something like your real name. I don't know for sure that these projects are even yours. You claim all these skills, but I have no way of verifying it before I even get you on the phone. So in that regard, as a hiring manager, I would actually pass on this resume because I can't verify that you do any of this. Uh, like there's no LinkedIn profile. There's no GitHub profile. Um, you claim to know these things, but I, I don't know for sure. Also, they claim to have eight years of experience as a software developer. They graduated in 2015. So March of 2015, it's now 2022. That's only seven years. So how did they have eight years of professional experience if they didn't even finish school until 2015? If they were getting paid for project work while they were in school, then that's fine. That counts as professional experience. But it does raise some suspicion over, okay, well, they said that, you know, they were going to school over the span of these five years, but they claim to have eight years of experience, but that math doesn't add up. And again, there's no project work on here. There's no LinkedIn history to show me when you started freelancing, who your client base is, is uh, you know, and all you've shown me are a couple of screenshots over here that I can't even really zoom in on to get a lot of detail on. So as a hiring manager, I would pass on this resume. So how would I fix the resume? I would make these links, if, if, if anything, like put these on GitHub or some kind of code repository or some sort of portfolio site that I can actually go verify that this was yours. That would be the first thing I would, I would do. The second thing, as a hiring manager, it's good to know that you've got all these skills. Maybe my company doesn't do anything with blockchain, doesn't do anything with Web3, um, but maybe I'm looking for a Python developer. Well, Python is way down the list over here. So if you're submitting your resume to me, the first thing I see is JavaScript, 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 then PHP, then HTML, and then Python. If this were a resume coming into me and I, were, I was hiring for a Python developer, I would want to see Python listed first. Because I want to see in a hurry, is this resume, is this CV relevant to what I'm looking for in an employee? Now, in this case, they're a freelancer. So, you know, maybe, maybe I would loosen that requirement up a tiny bit and say, okay, do they have PHP anywhere on here? The thing is, I have no verification of what you can do in Python. I have no idea how long you've used Python. Have you been using it for a month? Have you been using it for all of those eight years? You don't give me any indication and I have no project or, or background experience or anything like that to verify it. So for all those reasons, I would pass on this resume. So to make that better, uh, again, I would add a GitHub link or a LinkedIn profile outlining these are the kinds of projects that I've worked on. These are the times that I've worked on it or this is how much experience or how many years of experience I've had in each of these different technologies just to show, okay, I've been doing such and such for a certain amount of time. Now, Web3 is relatively new. Blockchain has been around, but like Web3 is relatively new. So, you know, some of these technologies are probably less than a year old. Ethereum has been around for a while, but I don't know. I don't know about Solidity. Um, smart contracts have been around for a little bit, but Web3.js, PancakeSwap, NFTs, like that's really only been around for a, a relatively short amount of time. So do I read this from top to bottom as far as like I've used React the most and I've done Firebase and all these other databases the least, which then also tells me that maybe you haven't done very much Python. So again, there's there's too much left to question here. So I would make these projects links to repos where I can go verify what the code is, the depth of what you've done, how you've contributed to these, if they're solo projects or if these were projects for clients, um, were they open sourced? If not, that's fine. But like, show me a portfolio site where you give me more information because I need more than just a screenshot to go on. Um, how big is the app? Is it in a play store? Can I go download it? Can I go look at what you've done 
Is there something more that I can go through? Is there like a demo video or anything that I can see about what you've done where you explain, this is what I did, this is how I built it, these were the technologies that I used? Like, I don't know if you used Google Firebase on any of these four projects or if that's just a skill that you happen to do on the side or did you use Firebase on all of these? Like, I don't know. So I, you definitely need a lot more information on that. So that would be my take on that resume. Thanks for checking that out. I hope that you found it helpful. I always appreciate feedback, so please let me know what you think. I appreciate any subscriptions, so please tell your friends and colleagues about it as well. Check out the website techinterview.guide for more information about when I'm live streaming and all of my free content. Drop by a live stream anytime to ask questions or message me privately, whatever makes you most comfortable. See you next time.